Hey everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. A couple of days ago, I posted a video of me doing a stretch swirl, and it's been on my mind since. In that video, I was working on an 8x10 canvas panel, and those dimensions aren't too far off from being almost square. I don't have any of the long, thin canvases because, well, those are, those are pricey and way out of my budget. And the truth is, lots of things I'd love to experiment on for you are, I see many of you as creative friends, so I'm going to risk opening up and really asking for a little help. Every time you go to Amazon, would you remember to use one of my links to get you there? That's it. It's totally free for you, but could help me a bit in getting the supplies I need for the videos. I don't think I need fancy video equipment, though if you're upgrading and you want to send me your old stuff instead of ditching it, I will use it. <laughs> I'm doing all of this on a four-year-old iPod Touch. <laughs> but it's for materials to film and all the experiments I try so that you don't have to. I feel guilty when I see curiosity expressed in the comments about something that you don't know about, and I can't help because I can't afford to try out whatever it is for you. My goal is to do the best job I can making the videos you request. I struggle with two ideas I really don't like, putting ads on this channel or only doing videos once in a while. I'd miss sharing giggles and exploring. So if you can help, click on a product link here as your doorway whenever you go to Amazon. Let me know in the comments what you think and if ads are a big deal. Your comments are always amazing. Okay, those of you that didn't want to hear the adults talk can come back in now. <laughs> Let's be kids again and have some fun. So, like I said, I don't have one of those skinny canvases, but I went digging around the garage and found this piece of birch plywood. And it's five inches by 17 inches, so totally not square. <laughs> and I sanded it smooth on all sides and gessoed the heck out of it. And now I have a fun new surface to play on. So I want to be able to take the stretch swirl out further so that we can see what it would look like if it was just one long one. And for my colors, I'm going to use the rainbow. And to prevent the issue I had with the beginning of the pour dribbling down the side of the cup, remember, I thought about maybe using the squeezy pour that I like to do with um, when I put the pour in a squeeze bottle and then squeeze it out from there. But the problem with that is that's only good for short runs. Because you've got to, when you're squeezing the bottle, you've got to let go for a bit to start squeezing it again. And that interrupts the continuous flow. So I don't think I'd make it across that whole board on one squeeze. So I kind of had to figure out another solution. To solve the problem, I had to first identify the problem. And... I tried pouring slowly from all different types of cups, from short, wide cups, from taller, thinner cups, from really skinny things, from sh really short and wide things. And no matter what I did, if I wanted to start really slowly, it would dribble down the side. If I pinched and made a little spout, that didn't help. So why was this happening? And then I got something that has one of these spouts, you know, like that's pulled out. And that totally solved the problem. But just for laughs, I turned this and then poured from here and it still also didn't dribble down the side. So then what I realized was it isn't the shape of the cup or the width or height or any of that. It's this. See how here it kind of flares out? If a cup is smooth on the edge, 
and you go to pour, it's going to the water or whatever liquid just wants to do this automatically. But if it has to come out and sort of clear this little curve first, it doesn't happen. So if you're going to do a swirl and you want to start out slowly, make sure you're using something that's got a little bit of a lip. Even a paper cup that has sort of a rolled edge, not bad at all. But all my little cups like this can't do it unless I'm willing to pour a huge amount at first and then get the pour started. And if you need to make a little tiny swirl and you don't want to use a big old cup that has a lip, then look for something that has a cap. Like this is a small container, but it has a cap. And I just made a couple of holes in the, in the top. And now once the cap is on and I go to pour, I can pour very gingerly and very small amounts because it's only going to be able to come out this little hole. So even if I over pour to prevent the dribble, I won't have a whole bunch of paint dumped out. And I think that people who struggle with the, you know, with the swirl, it's that sort of motion and getting a small amount of paint at a time. This could help you because this will control how much paint comes out and you won't have to be trying to master the amount of paint and the motion all at the same time. So like you won't have to walk and chew gum. <laughs> you only have to think of one thing and then eventually you may not need the cap. Think of the cap as your training wheels. Okay. Let's do this. And I'm literally just gonna pour the paints in in rainbow order. And I may throw in a little bit of white every now and then. Now I'm gonna spread some white paint on the board, just a very thin layer. This will spread it around. I didn't spread the white paint all the way to the edge because I'm gonna do something a little radical later. Okay, so and I put my cap back onto um, my little bottle. Let's see. Okay, here come the red. An orange. Cause I was thinking it was just going to be a blue and purple pour and nothing else. All right, I'm gonna tilt a little this way to stretch this guy open a little bit. Okay, so the radical thing that I want to do now. Uh, I put dimethicone in the white, in this little bottle of white. Now, I don't know, it's, it's like a tradition for some reason that you don't put silicone in the white. And it's not because the white can't handle silicone or anything like that. I think it's just, you know, we all, somebody must have started that and then everybody started watching that first person and then from then on we've all stopped putting silicone in the white. So, <laughs> And I, I don't sometimes do it because I want the colors that have silicone to interact with the white. And, and so I don't bother with um, silicone in the white. But since these don't have silicone in them, though there are little cells popping up anyway, I want to see what'll happen if I line this with white paint that does have silicone, well, actually dimethicone in it. I want to see how this would interact. So I'm actually being radical in two ways. A, I've put dimethicone in the white, oh my gosh. And now I'm actually adding dimethicone to a swirl. You don't do that either. Oh my word. The pouring police is bound to come get me now. I'm going to tilt this this way to avoid the lamp hot spot. 
that I know happens here. But now that I have done that, I will line the rest of the canvas or board or whatever with a little bit more white. Because what I want to do now is blow into the white. But in order to do that, I need a really good layer of white now. I didn't want to do it before because I didn't know where I was going to need to have it. I want to blow color into the white. And I'm going to use this tubing. This is just tubing from my fish tank. I guess I'm going to blow and start here to open this up and see what we get. love all of this lacing. Oh my goodness. Let's zoom in here so that you can kind of see what I'm doing better. And when you do something like this, you really need to have a good amount of paint to blow into. Because if it was a really thin layer of paint or the paint didn't, there wasn't enough of it, when you blew, it would just stop and you wouldn't get all this pretty lacing. It needs to have a mass of paint to go into to do all that. And then when you get, your paint gets to sort of like, you don't want to let a ridge form. You want to try to blow it over the edge. So like here, there's a mass of paint, like a, so I need to make that blow that so it makes the sort of like a waterfall off the edge. Otherwise, when it dries, it would be kind of lumpy right there and not a pretty look. I'm looking at it in a couple of different ways. One, this could be sort of order coming out of chaos or some sort of creature being born and leaving a skin behind. Yeah, I want to blow this out. That will give some balance to the crazy that's down here that I like so much. Such Okay, these are my two favorite colors, teal and purple. And ordinarily I should be like not loving this because there's so much yellow there. But I kind of do like it. So let's give it some texture here at least. Oh, I love that. I definitely need to open this up because it almost looks like it's breaking here. So I need to fill this in a little bit. way better. Okay, this area wants to be laced right here. Yeah. Using a thinner tube to be more precise. I'm not going to make them big like here. I'm just going to make them small and delicate. And when you're unsure of what you want to do with a pour, it's a good idea to keep turning it and looking at it from all different angles because you may not see something when you look at it one way and then when you turn it all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is what this is and then this is what I want it to be. Let's try blowing it in. It's better and spread this area out here so it doesn't look so fragile like it could snap there. It's 
So I'm using air very, very slowly and very, in very small little puffs to push the paint without moving it too much all at once so that it doesn't become muddy. This is a very challenging, interesting pour. I love parts of it and I'm baffled by other parts of it. Like, like I, 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 I look at it and I see things that are so cool. Yeah. Like I can't stop seeing a seahorse here. This end down here just looks like, I don't know, some sort of electricity or something. This little block of area here, I don't know. Like, if I could join this to this, I think I'd be happier. It's just this little area here that doesn't do anything for me. I don't hate it, I just don't care about it. <laughs> Love this. Love this. Like this a lot. Don't care about this at all. <laughs> so, I'm gonna give it a little bit more texture here and then I'm going to say this is done. I think I'm going to stop. Several elements I absolutely love and many that confuse me too. I'm going to turn it this way again to get out of that glare for you. I almost feel like I could cut it right here and this would be a piece, and then this would be a piece. Like they could be two separate pieces. I didn't want to continue to blow all the way here. I may end up doing that. I may just cut it right down through here. So you guys have got to tell me what you think. Let me take you down for some close-ups. I really want to play with this stretch swirl some more. Maybe stretching it this long may be too challenging. I don't know. I'm so curious. I'm going to try it again in other colors and see. Let me know what you think. I really hope you'll try it too. And if you do, let me know what you come up with. That kind of brings me to a point. I've been toying with starting a Facebook group because so often people want to show me something um, and there is no way to do that on YouTube. So I've been reluctant to do the Facebook group because there are so many of them already. And the thought of having to be in another one myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know. When would I have the time? And when would I have time to admin this thing? But let me know what you think. Would it be something that you would use? Do you want another group? What would it be about? Um, I wouldn't want it to be about just pouring because, like I said, there are so many of those already. And also I want to have resin in it and alcohol ink and maybe other things that we haven't come up with yet. So tell me your thoughts on that too. To all of you that inspire me to keep doing this, I want to say thank you. I also want to thank a special group of amazing people who generously sponsored me this November. I appreciate your donations to this channel so much. This is a joy for me to do, and you have really helped me keep it going. If you enjoy the channel and would like to help by being a sponsor too, there's a link in the description box below the video. Okay, let me know what you thought of this pour. Leave a thumbs up if you'd like to see more like it. Tell me in the comments too um, about what you've been working on. What your challenges are lately. And please share this with your friends. Click that subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.